What's going on, boys and girls? This is BBD with BBD TV, the biggest Tennessee Volunteers fan on YouTube. And you're watching the two Irish brothers. Shout out to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Go Vols! <laughs> How's it going, everyone? I am Indy Sean 45. I'm Irish Benjamin 57. And together, the two of us make up this little deal called the Two Irish Brothers Show. Now, you guys know all know the drill. If you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe tab in the bottom right-hand corner. Also, if you don't have a YouTube channel yet, create one, come back, and hit the subscribe tab. Give the show some love. Also, make sure to hit the like or the, the dislike uh, tabs. They uh, help with the algorithm. And also, as always, as Ben and I have been doing for the last several episodes now, a um, couple of awesome uh, trip packages that we've been promoting for a couple of friends of ours. Uh, one, Mr. Uh, Vince Rizzuto out of Philadelphia. He's with a company called Philly Sports Trips. Has an awesome package for the Notre Dame-Boston College game this year, along with... Uh, Eagles and Colts the next day in Indianapolis. And our friend, former Notre Dame tight end Irv Smith, he has a golf package set up for the Notre Dame Navy game next year in Ireland. Um, uh, golf, three rounds of golf with former Notre Dame football players, plus the, the Notre Dame Navy game itself next year in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Check it out. It is not too early to plan ahead for next year. But uh, Philly sports trips. Get on that in a hurry because tickets are going fast from what we understand. Mm -hmm. So with that said, Ben, getting right into things. <clears throat> um, everybody's been talking about this already. Now it's time for us to get in our word on this. Mm -hmm. Just recently, Mr. Uh, Genius Paul Feinbaum on ESPN decided it would be a good idea to once again, trash Notre Dame like he has done several times in the past. And should we really be shocked by this? No. 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 I, you know, I, what he said was just, well, you know what? Let's just, let's play the clip so play we can, uh, yeah, play the clip and we'll get a good, uh, get a good observation afterwards. We saw the first rankings yesterday. Which, which team is ranked too high for your taste? It's, it's Notre Dame. They should not even be in the top 10, Greeny. This is an absolute joke, and it happens every year with the AP poll, which is about as worthless as preseason NFL football. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Notre Dame is going to get run in the first game of the season. I mean, they're going to get destroyed uh, at the big house. And then after that, they have to go to North Carolina a couple weeks later, a team that will bounce back this year. They have Clemson on the schedule, and they have SC. They'll be fortunate to go 9-3. and three. Laughable that they're in the top five or six. Let me just say first, the most laughable part here is the fact that uh, he referred to uh, the horseshoe as the big house. Yes. Like, oh my goodness. Like, you just brought, like, hellfire and damnation upon yourself saying that the horseshoe is the big house. Like, I think every single Buckeye fan that is dead rolled over in their graves after that one. Like, holy crap. But oh, yeah, I mean, is it any surprise? It's, it's not a surprise at all. And... You know, unfortunately, Notre Dame has kind of, you know, gotten that, I don't even know the right word for it, that stigma, I guess, about them that, you know, they can't, they just can't win that big game. They just, you know, when it, when they're on the road, they just can't do it, you know, and people like Feinbaum, bomb, bomb, pray, pray on that, you know, and he's an SEC homer. We all know that. I mean, he's, you know, he's always in the pockets of the SEC teams. And 
I mean, he said, you know, lucrative stuff about Ohio State. He said lucrative stuff about Michigan. He said lucrative stuff. I mean, anybody that's really not an SEC team, he's had something to say. So, no, it's not shocking at all. Well, first off, Ben, the thing is this. Yeah, you and I are considered homers too because, let's face it, we never predict Notre Dame to lose. No, we don't. And I've, and I've said this a long time ago. I mean, we'll, we'll never predict – We'll never project Notre Dame to lose because what true fan does that? But at the same time, whatever happens on the field happens, and we'll deal with it and take it from there. Yeah. But, yeah, obviously Paul Fine Bum, that's the correct term for uh, for his name, Paul Fine Bum. Um, he is a <clears> – yeah, he's criticized numerous teams, don't get me wrong, but it just seems like for me he's always had it out for us. He's always given a little extra juice – for when it's come for when it's come time to uh, talk about us and you know crap all over us, I mean the be the best example I can give is this. And to any Oklahoma fan who's watching this, I'm not bad mouthing the Sooners. This is just the best example that I can give. So I think it was when I think it was after we lost to Alabama in the Rose Bowl. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it was after that. Fine bomb goes on a rant basically screaming like a little girl saying don't ever let Notre Dame in again they never deserve to be in the college football playoff again stop letting them in I'm Paul Feinbaum and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a fit I'm gonna cry like a little girl <laughs> don't let Notre Dame in pretty much pretty much but here's the thing he's he's saying that about us but yet a team like Oklahoma who's another blue blood of college football they are 0 and 4 in the college football playoffs since its inception. But but but, but, why, Sean, but why, hold on hold on hold on. But Sean, they they took Georgia to overtime. So 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 they're different. Yeah, you always give a team uh, respect for playing a tough football <clears> game, <throat> but at the end of the day, it still resulted in, in a loss, didn't right. it? Right. They but they are 0 and 4 in the college football playoff. Where is he, Where is he? Uh, Bad mouth in Oklahoma and saying they should never be uh, in allowed in the college football playoff again, but yet he's so ready to throw us out of it. Right. That's just what doesn't what doesn't add up. So it just seems like this guy has always had it out for us a little bit more than other teams. Always yeah. crapping over us yeah. extra when he when he has the chance to. Well, yeah, and it's it's one of those that Notre Dame and I've said it in numerous videos. You can go through my old videos and see me say this multiple times. Notre Dame is like one of five teams, you know, five college football teams that, that you either like them or you hate them. It's Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Alabama, Southern Cal, you know, and uh, Michigan, you know, and you either like them or you hate them, you know, and and Notre Dame gets that hate. And, and it's not because they're good or bad. It's just because they're Notre Dame. So, That's a, that, that makes sense for for a top five or six but, teams, you know. So I don't, I don't really care. I mean, you know, that's your cup of tea and cool, man. You know, you think that, then whatever. But well, yeah. no, and of course it's we all, know it's all trash. And you know what? I'm sorry. Football's football. We've seen big name teams lose to teams they should never have lost to. We've seen, you know, teams take other teams out of the wire when they weren't expected to. You know, uh, injuries happen. I mean, it happens. So to say that all, that Ohio State's going to run basically Notre Dame out the building is absurd. Is absolutely absurd. Well, and look, let's talk about that for a second. Now, let this is just a hypothetical, but you know what? Let's say that does happen. Which it could. Let's, I mean, it could. Let's say, let's, say it, let's say it does happen just for the sake of argument here. Let's say it does happen. Well, if it does happen, is it going to be because – uh because Paul Feinbaum said it was going to happen or because Ohio State's just a pretty damn good football team. Right. I'm going to say it's the latter on that one. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like Paul Feinbaum all, all of a sudden becomes a genius. No. Ohio State has a history of producing some damn good football teams. We all know that. That's black yeah. and white. Yeah. But but this guy it's it's like I almost wonder is he do you think he's just trying to be like uh like the Howard Stern of ESPN and say shocking things and get people riled up? I think so. I, I think a lot of it is is shock jock mentality. I really do. But I'll say this: if if that is the case, he's not very consistent with it at all. He's not very good at it. 
I mean, yeah, I, I guess he does. He did accomplish that because you have a lot of Notre Dame outlets across the country talking about it. I mean, here we are talking about it now, and maybe we shouldn't give him the time of day because he also has a history of being quite an idiot too. Yeah, but it's like you know, you can't help it when someone bad mouths you, bad mouths your team. Yeah, you you deserve to you deserve the right to talk about it and fire back. Like, which obviously Paul Feinbaum's never going to see us because you know we're small potatoes to him. Right. But um, but I will say this though, and this and I know this is an argument that's been used by several people already, but you can't help but point it out enough. So he's saying that our preseason ranking, and he thinks it doesn't doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does matter because you got to start somewhere. With the, with the right. rankings, um, so he says that we're uh, we're not deserving of our of our ranking. Well, again, this argument has been used several times already, but for like the last five years or so, since that that dreaded twenty sixteen season, um, we've started where we've started. We've always finished higher right. than where we were than where we were started than where we started off the year. Right. So. He doesn't exactly have a right to say that with the way recent history has been. Well, and it would, and all it takes is a couple minutes of doing actual research. But you know, you never really. I don't think he's one that does actual research. So no, he's just he's become that that clown face of ESPN and college football, and you know he. Um, well, I said this at work, and now I have a a bunch of colleagues that are. <laughs> just that are uh i'm kind of in the in the uh what you call it the um the outhouse with them because uh i made a comment saying that once paul feinbaum gets some hair on the top of his head then he'll have credibility so now uh everybody thinks i hate bald people now at work <laughs> that's what fun. do you th do you think do you think i hate bald people ben i don't think so i wouldn't be <laughs> with you if i did yeah so, i don't think so but it's just, yeah, I just, uh, th this guy is a piece of work like a lot of other people on ESPN. And should we be giving him the attention? No, but it's something to talk about. And it, it, I just, I've never understood how you could be just so blatantly disrespectful to somebody. Because let's talk about this game for a second. I, I think Paul Feinbaum, along with a lot of other people, not just haters, but the ones in our own fan base that, you know, the quote unquote realists, they're not giving us enough credit for what we do have. I mean, yes, we've had some unfortunate things happen, like Avery Davis going down and, uh, you know, a few other injuries, but there is a lot of damn good talent on this team, especially on defense. Yeah. I mean, this defense in particular has a chance to really, really stifle CJ Stroud. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, without giving a ton away from the preview. Yeah, I mean, yes. You know, this is this will be you know, giving I guess maybe a little snippet. This will be one of the best defenses that Ohio State sees all year in Notre Dame. I agree. Until they hit the playoffs. If they make it to the playoffs, I think I think this game could very much decide playoffs for either Notre Dame or Ohio State. You know, and that's you know, for a different video, but yeah. And you know, there's a lot of variables in this game that I think a lot of people aren't actually like giving credit to Notre Dame and giving credit to Ohio State and all that. So, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, and regardless of who wins or who loses this game, I think it's going to be a lot better than what people uh, think it will be. Now, if I'm proven wrong, then I'm proven wrong. Right. Okay, I, I, I hands down, I admit that. Right. Um. But of course, you know, a lot of that we will uh we will save for the preview, which can you believe is next week already? Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Summer's gone by fast, man. Absolutely crazy. And when you stay busy, that tends to happen, especially as you get older. But yeah, look for that next week, people. Ben and I start doing our previews and recaps. Mm -hmm. So, but before we go any further, uh Mr. Feinbaum, I have this to say to you. It takes us to the letter B. B, because you got such a smart mouth, I'm going to bat you upside your damn head. <laughs> yeah, take that, Paul Feinbaum. What now? Yeah, you just got beat by homie the clown. Homie don't play that. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So moving on to the next, uh, the next big news here. Um, so as we all know by now, very unfortunate news, Ben. Um, Keon Keeley, our stud defensive end from the 2023 class, has officially decommitted from Notre Dame, which yes. there was a good chance there was that that was going to happen. Yes, there was. There was. Yeah, and and these kinds of things happen, and I've seen a lot of like panic in the fan base like oh my gosh this dude is decommitted from us sky is falling all that kind of thing it happens <clears throat> and i'm not and here's the thing i mean yeah when you see it happen it sucks there's without question but this is where we all need to be reminded even the two of us included ben yeah it's so it's fine to get excited when a uh, when a recruit announces his uh, commitment to us, but really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter until his name is on the dotted line, right? On national, yeah. whether, it be, whether it be the early recruiting or the early recruiting, the early commitment area uh, spot, which I think is in like what December, mm -hmm. mid December or something like that, or national signing day in February, it doesn't matter until they sign on the dotted line. Yeah, and like and like we've said before. You can't be surprised if these kids decide to take their visits to other schools. It's just, it's going to happen. Yep. But all, all I can say is this. Yeah. If, if, there, if we don't get Keon Keeley back, it sucks, which it's looking like he'll, if, he, if we don't get him back, he's probably going to Alabama. However, I heard he will be in attendance for the Ohio State game in a couple yes. weeks. Yes. But yeah, because he has but, two teams on his, radar if you will that are playing in that game ohio state and notre dame so <clears throat> yeah so is there a chance that we could win him back yes possibly of course. Of course. but the, but the bottom line is we sh none of us should be surprised at any of this i mean i guess the only concern is could it cause a, a, tr a trickle down effect where we lose someone else because there's been talk like um that our our defensive back recruit in that class uh peyton bowen was looking to join him if in the case that he did go elsewhere, but so far I haven't heard anything announced from uh, Peyton Bowen's camp or Peyton Bowen himself. So I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, um, it, it's, yeah. And it's interesting to note because he has five schools that I'm sorry, four schools, four schools that he has taken visits to Ohio state, Notre Dame, Alabama, and, um, wasn't it Texas A and M in Florida? Florida, okay. Because he is coming from the Tampa Bay area, um, and Florida is one of three D Division One schools that are looking at him um, that have given him offers: Florida State and then uh, University of Miami. Okay, it's also important to note that Keon Keeley has made the most visits to Notre Dame, and then the second most visits he has had is to Florida. So um, it's – I think it could potentially be a situation with him. And this is just what I think, and I don't have actual facts, so take it with a grain of salt. I think it is that somebody else has offered him immediate playing time, whether that's Alabama, whether it's Florida, Ohio State, you know. And I think the immediate playing time may be factoring into that. Now, do I know that for a fact? No. You know, but I we've seen that a lot in the past where somebody offers a, a recruit immediate playing time and then that kid goes to a different school because of that, which understandable. I get it. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's very it's if you it's very had the opportunity. I would take it. You know, I mean, it's a no brainer. So, yeah. And I mean, if we and let's say worst case scenario, we do lose. it. You know, Notre Dame loses him. If we were to lose him to Alabama, I mean, come on. Really? It's not like we lost him to, like, no-name state. You know, it clearly it's another mega powerhouse team that we're losing him to. Exactly. It's, I mean, I, mean I, I, would, I would definitely feel embarrassed as a fan if we lost him to, like, uh, some FCS school or something like that. He's then, got, yeah, he's got like, for example, he's got K-State looking at him. He's got Georgia Tech. 
you know, Pittsburgh. If we lost him to like K State or Georgia Tech, yeah, I'd be a little like. What's going on? What's going on here, Coach oh, Freeman? You know, like yeah, exactly. Like Alabama or even Florida or Ohio State, I wouldn't be sued. I mean, I'd be upset. Uh, obviously, I want the guy, but I mean, it's not you know the end of the world. No. So, so with everyone seeing the Keon Keeley news, <clears throat> do go with me. Like go with me right here, like this. Breathe in. <laughs> Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's not the end of the world, okay? Yeah, be pissed about it, fine, but don't be panicking that we're in a state of emergency just because we lost a, a big time recruit who may not even necessarily for sure be gone. Because, like we said earlier, this could very well be a power play on his part. Who knows? We've seen this stuff happen before. But if we do lose him, we've still got one hell of a class in place. So I'm not. I'm not upset. I'm still not going to be that upset over it. Right. So, I mean, of course, he's a guy that you would love to have without without question. Right. So we'll just have to see what happens in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, that'll give us a good idea of uh, where things are headed. And But, of course, you know, if he commits somewhere, that'll be a pretty good indicator as well. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, Going moving forward, I know there was something Ben that you wanted to talk about that you saw that I hadn't seen yet because I've been busy with a lot of things. Okay, big okay, so big news in the conference realignment situations that we've been seeing across the country. Um, and like one of the biggest ones currently is the Big Ten and the fact that Southern Cal and UCLA have basically told the world that they're joining the Big Ten. Well. It sounds like, and this is via fan, via fan you, you, you broke up there, Ben. What, what was the site? This is via Fan Nation. Um, UCLA's move to the Big Ten could potentially be in danger. Um, so the University of California Board of uh, Regents has basically said, uh, hold on a second, dudes, like you didn't get – legit like approval to do this so you're gonna have to take a step back um so that's a really interesting tidbit and the guy james parks is his name that wrote this article he goes on to talk about that if ucla can't make that move because they're not approved or whatever that stanford could be the team that joins southern cal now hmm. we were discuss we were talking about this before the show started and I think, and this is taken with a grain of salt because I know we have a lot of traditionalists out there, there's nothing wrong with that, that think that Notre Dame should remain independent. And I understand that. But if, if it is Stanford and Southern Cal, let's just say that UCLA doesn't make it in, doesn't, doesn't get that nod that, yeah, you can do this. And Stanford gets their approval, and it's Stanford and Southern Cal that joins the Big Ten. Notre Dame then only really has two rivals left. That won't be in the Big Ten. I mean, you have uh, you have Navy and Boston College, and that's it. I mean, you would have Michigan, Purdue, Michigan State, Ohio State, Southern Cal, and Stanford, and then like regional rivals, Indiana, and regional rival like Northwestern, all in the Big Ten. I mean, to me, that I think would force Notre Dame to go. I think maybe this is where we need to move to. Well, and also depends too. I mean, several factors, you know, they have the deal that they're uh, negotiating with NBC. I can't, I'm not sure if that officially went through or not, but I know they're talking about it. Um, But also an, an, a big factor too, is what is the playoffs going to look like if it does eventually expand? Like yeah. which, which route are they going to go with? Are they going to go with the route of, the top conference champions getting the bye week in that 12 team scenario or, you know, just what? Cause I think, I think what happens is as long if Notre Dame, as long as they have a chance to get the top seed in whatever playoff format, the uh, NCAA goes with, then they're going to stay independent. They're not going to join a conference unless they absolutely have to. That's yeah. just, you know, the attitude that, you know, Swar Swar Jack Swarbrick and, uh, the administration has shown 
They're not going to go to a conference unless they absolutely have to. And obviously uh, the COVID year in 2020 was a, a prime example of that. Yeah. But yeah. you're right though. I mean, it would make sense for, uh, for all the, the rivals that they do have in that conference. Yep. And I, I mean, and, and then if they were, you know, let's just say this scenario, let's say they go to the big 10, Notre Dame moves to the big 10. And then, I mean, you could make it work if you're Notre Dame with Navy and Boston College if you wanted to play them every year. You know, I mean, and same with Georgia Tech. If you wanted to play Boston College one year and Georgia Tech another and keep the Navy tradition going, you could make that work. I mean, you know, most teams have three to four non-conference games on their schedule. You could you could make that work. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely no. a way that it can And happen. I'm not saying that I want this to happen. Let's look, before people start, you know, getting ready to like crucify me because I'm a Notre Dame fan and I say that they should remain independent. I'm not saying I want this to happen. I'm just saying these are possible scenarios. Yeah, you have to be you have to be on the lookout for this stuff because you never know it, that it where the the way things are going in the world of college football right now with college realignment, this stuff very well could happen. And as a fan, we need to be prepared for it if it does. And notice yeah. the key word is if. Well, and I think the biggest thing, too, that people, I think, aren't thinking about is some of these conference alignment, it affects NIL deals, man. It affects where guys want to go. It affects, you know, it affects more than just who you're playing on the schedule and whose conference you're in. It, there's a whole lot of variables that go into this kind of stuff. So only time will tell. Yeah. Well, this is definitely another uh, inter interesting scenario. I I do think in the end, though, UCLA will find a way to push that yeah. that application through. Um, but yeah, um, anything's it's all up in the air right now at this point. Who knows what's going to happen? I myself, I have not ruled anything out. No, and you can't so. until anything's actually official. I mean, you can't. You know, no, not at all. So with that said, uh, I think we've covered everything, Ben, that we wanted to talk about. I can't, I don't have any other topics at this point in time. I got nothing. Um, so like we said at the, uh, at the start of the video, we're actually in, in the midway point, actually, um, hard to imagine, but next week, Ben and I, we start our preview for mm -hmm. the, uh, the two 2022 college football season, very exciting times. It is definitely starting to feel a little bit more like fall every day as uh, uh, as far as weather goes. Uh, so we are so close to being there. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And hands down, my favorite time of year. Yep. So, so yeah, with that said, um, I got nothing else. Ben has nothing else. So, as we always say, um, I, for starters, I am Mindy Sean 45. I'm Irish Ben 57. And as we always say, in addition to that, good night, God bless, and go Irish. Go Irish.